Joining me now to take up today's big recovery, as well as the Fed chief economist at the Milken Institute, Bill Lee. Bill, thank you for coming in. Good to see you. Uh, the market. Let's start with the market today, because uh, we've never had a, a gain, a point gain like this before in our history. Uh, what do you make of it? You know, we can call this the Kevin Hassett recovery of the market because Kevin Hassett essentially told the markets that Powell's job is safe and we don't have to worry about a change in, 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 of a sudden Fed, change of the Fed chair. And suddenly the markets turned around and became confident that monetary policy is in place, despite the fact that Powell completely flooded the messaging uh, after the FOMC meeting. Uh, he should have communicated to the markets, we're ready to pause with looking at the data, the economy may slow, and we're going to be cautious. Instead, he said, we're on autopilot, and that really scared the hell out of the markets. Well, you, you know what didn't scare the markets much were those incredible retail figures. I mean, they were very good. And I'm just wondering to what extent the market had been downplaying or underplaying uh, the effect of the general economy, which is still very sound. The, the, it's, it's exactly very sound, and we are expecting a, a above trend growth in the U.S. economy. It's fueled by the tremendous uh, dynamic labor market we've had. The job growth has been spectacular. Which and was fact, fueled, of course, by the tax cuts tax and the cuts, deregulation exactly. program. And in fact, the, the, it's given, given consumers so much confidence that they're actually de decreasing their savings rate, which is not really sustainable, but what we're looking for is for the tax cuts to kick in boost investment and boost productivity, which then increases real wages. That sequence has to come in play. And what's uncertain right now is whether or not this spat with China is causing firms to cut back on their investments. I'll talk about China in a second. But you know what bothers me is when I continue to hear that the tax cuts all went to stock buybacks. Uh, when you when you hire a particular worker, you have to spend on average $10,000 in hiring costs and in training costs for that particular worker. That is an investment. It's an investment in human capital, and it's an investment that has been made millions of times since the tax cuts, and that's why we now have more jobs than job seekers. That's because of the tax cuts. And David, let's not forget, Everyone says it just goes to stock buybacks, but that, that doesn't mean that the money disappears. What the shareholders are doing is to say, if my managers in this company cannot use my money, I'm going to put it to work in other companies. And so the money does trickle back into other companies and fuels investment and new startups. But it takes longer. And, and let's admit that the financial markets really are in turmoil right now so that allocating these funds becomes much more difficult. Yeah. But nevertheless, stock buybacks does not mean the money disappears. Let's talk about the turmoil of the markets because, again, I, I, the president President, when he said it, I guess it was two months ago when he first pointed out that the Fed was moving too fast on, on hiking interest rates, uh, a lot of people said, oh, come on, you know, this is, this is first of all, unseemly to have a president attacking the Fed, but, but it, I, I trust Powell more than I do Trump on monetary policy. In fact, it, didn't it look like Trump was right now in hindsight? Well, every president going back to, to Lyndon Johnson has always had a problem with the Fed. No one, no president likes the fact that the Fed is doing monetary policy in an independent way. So, so I think Trump is just going back to what the presidents have always done, to remind the Fed that we need to look at the economy without uh, being on autopilot. So I think, I think the, the markets were, were spooked over the fact that over the last several years, the Fed's been doing extraordinary things, which is to say money's been at zero interest rates for way too long. And they were, were just adjusting back to where it should be. But the Fed has also told us we're doing it slowly. And Trump is reminding them they've got to really do it slowly because we don't want to jeopardize this recovery. And, you know, it's not just the stock market that, that we're all worried about. There is a worldwide economic slowdown. In Europe, it's, uh, it's partly because of their, their economic policies, which are still antiquated back to the, to the kind of semi-quasi-socialist states that they've uh, set up in systems. Uh, in China, of course, it's largely because of what we have been doing to try to get them in order. Uh, so it, it wouldn't take that much for what's happening in the world to affect us to the point where we have a real serious slowdown. Absolutely. In fact, U.S. is the only bright light in the global economy yeah. in terms of growth. Everyone else is, is staggering under the kind of um, structural difficulties that socialism and high government spending uh, uh, brings about. China, for example, is, is feeling the, the effects of the tariffs much more than we initially thought because the private sector is actually in danger of slowing down to the point where they're putting in place a lot of uh, fiscal policies to try to yeah. boost the Chinese economy. Now, there was an article in, of all places, the New York Times, uh, this was last week, no. suggesting that there are people in the private sector in China, and there's, there are people, as, as intrusive as, as the communist government is, there are 
private enterprises that do happen in a communist country. And they actually like, according to this New York Times article, they actually like what Donald Trump is doing because it gives them more leverage to work against the hardcore communists, like, may I say, President Xi, uh, to encourage more opening in the economy. Do you agree with that? And do you think that, that Trump is on the right side of this issue? Trump is helping the private sector of the Chinese economy become more dynamic because that's the only real source of growth in China. The state enterprises are known to be inefficient and, and huge behemoths and bureaucracies that are losing money. And so Trump has done is to say, we need to preserve intellectual property rights, which is exactly what the Chinese economy wants, because there's a lot of development of, of new patents in China, and they want their rights protected. They want market access to the United States, because the U.S. is one of the biggest dynamic markets in the world. So we want market access. We both want market access. We both want to protect intellectual property. And it looks like we're starting on that track now, because this, the Chinese have passed some legislation that says, the intellectual property theft is illegal. Let's see how they implement those laws because the Chinese are very famous for putting in a lot of laws that are not enforced. Yes, but they're also getting very desperate right now and they're getting a lot of pressure from the inside. I, I think the president's still on the right track here. Bill, what a pleasure to see you. Happy New Year to you. Thanks for coming Happy on. Year. Appreciate it.